Hello everybody, my name is Mike Geig, uh, and in this video we are going to be looking at part 6 of my mini-series on object-oriented game development. In the last video I left you with a question. Uh, the question is, how can we get the comet to, to take a life from the ship when the comet hits the end of the screen? Okay, and then on the same note, how do we get a bullet uh, to add a point uh, or uh, add to the score of the ship when it destroys a comet. All right? um, both things should happen in the collide uh, sections of the code. And I mean, one way we could do it is we could make the, the ship um, global to all uh, of the H files, all of the classes. Um, I'm of the opinion that that's not necessarily the best way to go about it. Sure, it's simple. And I guess maybe if it is simple, it is the best way. But I'd like to, to take an opportunity show you guys something really cool that C++ allows you to do that allows us to, to work with this particular issue. And what I'm talking about is pointers to functions. All right. So far we've had pointers that point to variables, right? memory addresses that store data. However, we can set up a pointer and make it point to the memory address of a procedure or a function. Doing so will allow us to essentially call back a function uh, from one class back to main and run some code stored in main. All right, it works just like assigning a variable, and instead we're assigning a function, and it's pretty neat. Uh, hopefully, you guys will it'll be easier to explain as I go ahead and I make it. So I'm going to come up here where my globals are, and I'm going to create a section for my prototypes, and let's create a couple prototypes here. All right, uh, the first is I want to have take life. And take life is what the comet's going to do when it takes a life from the player. All right, so it's going to be void. And now this is something called a naming convention or a calling convention. I'm sorry, not a naming convention, a calling convention. Um, it's telling the compiler uh, how how we want to call this. All right, and it's something we have to specify for our pointer functions, uh, or I'm sorry, function pointers. Um, and so to do it with either a, a, a a, a Borland or a Microsoft compiler, you do underscore underscore C D E C L, right? That's the that's the the calling uh, uh, what I want to say method or the, the calling scheme for this function, and then the function name, take life. Now, if you're using like a new CC uh, or so or a different type of compiler, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in, in common in here so you can see how you would do it. You would do void take life, and then double underscore attribute double underscore parentheses parenthesis cdecl and parenthesis and parenthesis just like that all right that's how it would look for you all right the next prototype i want to do is void cdecl and this one's going to be score point all right and once again if you're using a new compiler um, that's going to be score point underscore underscore attribute Underscore underscore parenthesis parenthesis C D E C L just like oop, just like that awesome all right so those are the, uh, the the two functions these are the two functions in main since main will have access to ship it's global to main uh, we can do uh, what we need here and we can just pass this method in uh, to the the class objects so I'm going to come down to the bottom here I'm going to just copy some stuff here come all the way to the bottom. We're going to write the definition for these methods. Go ahead and get rid of that there. And take life is going to be simple. It's simply just going to be ship lose life. All right. Uh, score point, once again, is going to be simple. It's going to be ship uh, add point. <clears throat> That's why we wrote those two methods in there. Great. So everything's hooked in in main. This works just like a function so far that we've always used. Ignoring this, you know, the CDECL. If you ignore that, this is just like any other function. Okay, so so far so good. Now what we need to do is we need to tell our comet class and our bullet class that these methods exist, and we need to make these methods parts of of those classes. All right, so I'm going to come over here to my comet.h, and in my private member variable, I'm going to declare a variable that's going to contain this method. Okay, so it's going to be void because that's the return it, that's the return type of my function. My function is void. And it takes nothings. All right, so it's going to be void, and then it's going to be parenthesis asterisk, asterisk take 
life and parenthesis, right? So that's the name of it, and then void for the, the parameters. There's nothing in there, so it's void. All right, so that declares it. Now I'm going to modify my constructor so that my constructor reads in a variable from main that's going to be a pointer to this function. And once again, it's going to look like void, parenthesis, asterisk, take life, oops, take life, and parenthesis, open parenthesis, void. All right? And I'll go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to come over here to my constructor and my CPP file. And I will paste that there. Oop, guess I didn't need that comma. Excellent. Okay, so now what I'm essentially doing is I'm reading in this as a variable, even though it's a pointer to a function. So down here, after I assign my image, I'm going to do comment take life, because that's the variable. And I'm going to set it equal to the take life that I read in. Now, depending on the compiler that you're using, depending on versions and whatever, all right, there might be a different way you have to write this. Okay, this does not work in my particular setup. But if if this line here does not work for you, try this line. You're going to try. I'm going to put it in a comment here. Uh, comment uh, take life equals ampersand take life. All right. I was reading that some people can only do it this way. I do it that way, and and so there you go. So, just in case you're having problems getting it to work, try that. It all depends on how your referencing is set up. Okay, great. So now all we have to do is whenever we collide with a border, all right, which is uh, where I commented in take life here before, I'm just going to say take life because that method now exists locally within my class. It belongs to my class. All right, And so I'm going to build this. And upon building it, I get an error. There is something I forgot. I'm going to come back over here to main. And i got to find it here. When we, when we create a comment, remember, we modified the constructor. And so now we need to, to use this modified constructor. Um, since we have take life declared here as a method, we just need to pass in the, the reference or the address of that method when we call the constructor for a comment right after the image. So I'm just going to say uh, ampersand take life and that will pass the memory address of that handle into our method or, or into the constructor. So let's go ahead and build it now and it should build just fine. Perfect. Now before we can run this and, and see this working we need to add uh, a little bit of code to our render section that will you know, basically display you know, the amount of lives that we have. So I'm going to come down here to my render area under begin render or uh, be begin project render. I'm going to say al draw text and I'm going to pass in font 18. Um, the color is going to be al map RGB. We're going to do 255 0 255. Uh, the x value is going to be 5, y value is going to be 5, um, flags will be 0, and the text will be, um, oh, and I forgot I want to add some variables, so that's going to be al draw text f. Oh man, I just have all sorts of typos though. There we go. Uh, and then what we're going to say is player has percentage i lives left, player has destroyed um, percent I objects and then my variables are going to be ship get lives and ship get score uh, just like that awesome and so now when I run this we'll be able to see myself losing lives so we'll go ahead and run it now we don't lose lives for collisions just yet okay uh, we haven't written that code yet but you'll see I will lose lives as the the comets hit the back border that's the callback function working see there of course we don't have any code to end the game yet so we will go into the negatives here um, so we're losing our lives there we'll worry about decrementing for collisions when I work the explosions in. okay great 
So that callback function is working. So now let's get our bullet callback function working. So I'm going to come down here. Uh, oh, this is already done. Great. So now all I have to do is I need to modify my uh, my bullet method here, or I'm sorry, my bullet constructor here to uh, to utilize a variable I'm going to create. That variable is going to be void. And it's going to be a score. Oops, score point, just like that. Void. There we go. And in the constructor, I'm going to have void. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, score point. Void, just like that. Awesome. Let's grab that. Come over to my CPP file, to my constructor, and paste it in there. And very much like we saw with Comet, we are simply going to say uh, bullets score point. It's going to equal score point, just like that. Awesome. Now we've got that working. And now in my collided section, I'm going to say here if object ID equals enemy. So if we collide with the enemy, then we're going to score point. Great. All right. Now all we need to do is we need to plug this into the, the, the score point function into the constructor in main. So we'll come up to where we fire our bullet right here. And we just need to add it into our constructor. So we're going to do ampersand uh, score point. Just like that. Great. Let's go ahead and run this. And now watch my score. You'll see that now I'm scoring points via the callback method. Awesome. Yeah, uh, the challenge could really use beefing up a little bit because since I can fire so many bullets, I can pretty much just do this and never worry about losing, but uh, it's not about making it challenging, it's just about making it at this point. Alright, great. So, uh, so once again, just to kind of summarize, we are using function pointers, uh, pointers to functions, uh, to go ahead and, and get uh, this all working without making things too global. Um, we're basically utilizing uh, this feature C++ to, to bounce a command from our comet to our main, from our main into our ship. Okay, um, and it, it's it's pretty neat there. All right, now n another thing I discovered uh, while I was playing around with this. This is not something I noticed while I was developing uh, this game. Uh, you know, while I wasn't recording, um, is there is a bug inherent in the the way that I've programmed this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this bug. And then I'm going to explain it to you. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and run this, and I'm going to wait for there to be two comets on the screen. Now I'm going to end the game, or I'm going to try to escape. And you're going to notice I'm going to get an error. All right. And the error is here. And the issue is this. And and I, like I said, I apologize for for doing it this way. And you know, I didn't even, I never noticed this error um, while I was while I was developing it. The issue is this: is the first time the comet is destroyed. All right, it it uh, it it deallocates this memory using al destroy bitmap. And remember, all the comets share the same bitmap, so the bitmap gets deallocated. We want that to happen. The problem is there's no way to tell if memory is deallocated. Um, there's no uh, Allegro function to say, oh, hey, by the way, I already deallocated that that uh, image. Now I could make a static flag or something like that that says, oh, hey, did you deallocate? Yes. Okay, then we can skip deallocating something like that. Um, I can certainly do that. But at this point, I just want to make it an easy fix. And my easy fix is this. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this. Okay? We're getting rid of that line of code. And we're going to go back to the way we had done it. And I know that that kind of takes away some of the luster uh, of the object-oriented programming method. But at this point, you know, I'm just trying to work through it. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to, um, you know what, as a matter of fact, no, I don't need to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way where I'm going to come down and uh, destroy it by hand. So I'm going to do ale, destroy bitmap, and I'm going to destroy my comet. Oop. There we go. And I'm going to destroy my ship. So kind of stinks. Um, there's probably a way around it, um, but I didn't want to spend too much time researching it. 
and figuring out a more elegant solution. I'd rather just get these videos done and, and, and get them uh, made for you guys. So, uh, so once again, I apologize for that. If, so if you've been running it in the past and you notice that error, this fixes that error. Um, and I guess shame on me for not thoroughly testing the game. Uh, but uh, that's what you get for making stuff pretty pretty quick. So, um, so now you can see, since we're doing it that way, I'll run my game again. Uh, I will allow there to be two items on the screen, and when I escape, no error. Okay. Um, so uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, there we go. So okay, this video not you know the most super entertaining, uh, but basically we saw how to use function pointers or pointers to functions, depending on how you want to say it, uh, which is actually a really neat and very little used uh, feature of C++. Uh, and we also discovered a bug and fixed it. So uh, in the next videos, we're going to look at explosions, uh, backgrounds, uh, sound effects, and states, and we'll be wrapping this whole thing up.